Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Al's Philosophy Corner, the show where I pretty much rant about whatever it is I want to talk about, education-related or otherwise. Let's just get started. So, as I started to build up my clientele as a private tutor, I increasingly became aware of a problem that, to this day, makes absolutely no sense to me. While my typical tutoring request nowadays is one that comes at the beginning of a semester or school year, and is usually more of a homeschooling kind of situation, I did get a lot of what you might call middle-of-the-term intervention requests in my earlier days. Cases where a student, or at least their parents, don't know that something is wrong until the first report card comes out. With those kinds of situations, I found that it wasn't all that helpful to try and ask the parents or students about what exactly they were struggling with. So, I would come to the first meeting and ask to look at graded materials, particularly past exams and quizzes. It wouldn't be long before I ran into my first case of a student telling me that their teacher doesn't allow them to take their graded exams home. Then I ran into another case, and another, and another. For me, this was an inconvenience, but I had ways to work around it. I had other ways of figuring out where a student was at and where we needed to start in order to get them caught up. So this wasn't too much of an obstacle for me. But for the students, this was an absolute disaster. The obvious questions come up. How is a student supposed to know what they got wrong and learn from their mistakes? Even if the teacher shows them their exam for a while before taking them back, how likely is it that the student won't forget their mistake and need to look over it again in a month or two? Forget about reviewing in a month or two. How likely are they to have had enough time to understand their mistakes the first time they're looking over it in class. Even if the teacher spends the whole class period going over corrections, what if a student is just having an off day and would be better able to figure out their mistakes on their own when they're in a more relaxed state of mind at home? Even if the teacher allows them to schedule a time to look at it again later, how many students are actually going to feel comfortable asking to see their exam, especially if they need to keep looking at it over and over again? As far as those questions are concerned, I imagine that the answer, both fortunately and unfortunately, is some variation of, you're just going to have to deal with it. The unfortunate part, I imagine, doesn't require any explanation on my part. So, what do I mean when I say it's also fortunate? In a previous video about how long one should study, I made the point that students need reliable feedback. I also briefly mentioned what I consider to be the best way to get that feedback, developing the ability to self-assess. I told you I was going to bring this up a lot. Anyway, this kind of situation where you can't get your exams back pressures you into finding ways to quiz yourself. If you care about improving your performance, this kind of situation can serve as your wake-up call to start becoming a more independent learner. And whether it's in academics or in daily life, learning to help yourself is definitely going to benefit you more in the long run. So that's all good, but I want to get to the bigger question surrounding this whole situation, and that's the question of why. For what reason do some teachers do this? I had some possible reasons in mind, then I looked around the internet to see if there was anything else I hadn't considered. I didn't find much of anything new. From what I've been able to gather, it seems to boil down to three possible reasons. First possible reason, it's more convenient for the teacher. I've written practice exams for students before. I don't do that anymore because I quickly found out that it was a lot more time consuming than I expected, especially with math exams. Inserting math 
symbols in Microsoft Word or Google Docs, not as convenient as you would have thought. Very, very slow, agonizing process. So I get it. It's no secret that a lot of teachers don't get paid all that well in the United States, so wanting to streamline work by writing an exam once and reusing it every year after that is understandable. If you're not getting paid to write a new exam every year and you're already swamped with plenty of other work to do, it's no surprise that at least a few teachers would want to do this. A natural side effect of a broken system. For this streamlined process to work, a teacher would have to prevent students from taking the exams home so that they can't be given to future students who would then gain an unfair advantage. I have three problems with this. One, you're not going to stop the students with good memory from describing the exam questions to another student who hasn't taken it yet. And so, two, your best course of action is actually to just let everyone have that advantage. I couldn't tell you the number of times that I had professors basically tell the class exactly what was going to be on the midterm or final, and there was still a wide range of grades on those exams. Even when the questions were known, it didn't mean much if students didn't care enough to develop skill. And this leads to my third problem, which is that this overprotectiveness of the exam questions, intentionally or not, signals to students that actual learning doesn't matter. All that matters is knowing the questions on the exam and nothing else. Congratulations! We've trained multiple generations of students to not care about what matters. And we have the nerve to complain about rampant cheating. And that actually ties nicely into the second possible reason I can think of for holding on to graded exams attempting to prevent cheating. No, this isn't the unfair advantage of previewing the questions that I just finished discussing. This is something else. This is, for example, when a student comes back the next day claiming that they got a question marked wrong even though they had it right, and for all the teacher knows, the student could have just quote-unquote fixed it at home. A very awkward situation indeed, even more so if the parent comes along with the student to demand a higher score. I would have been supportive if this had been a teacher's main reason for keeping graded exams. That is, until I realized that there was an easy solution here. Scan the exams or make photocopies. That way, if a student ever has a claim, there'd be a backup of the original exam to help confirm whether or not any tampering was involved. So for a long time, I kept thinking about this and didn't have any other ideas as to why a teacher might want to hold on to graded exams. Until I watched a news segment on YouTube one day that introduced me to the concept of teachers buying teaching materials. I'm talking worksheets, lesson plans, and also exams. Oh, I think I'm onto something here. If, and this is a big if, if a teacher bought an exam to give to their students, I would imagine that some sellers, probably most, would have a rule to limit the use of said exam. Copyright is a messy thing indeed. So it would seem then that if a purchased exam is being used, Allowing it to leave the school building could potentially get teachers into some legal troubles. And who in their right mind would want to deal with that mess? I have my doubts that this is actually what's happening, though. Different classrooms will likely require different exam styles and different exam content, and I'd like to believe that most teachers would want to retain control over those two things by crafting their own exams. It would probably be much easier to make your own than to go through the hassle of trying to find an exam that perfectly matches your needs and standards. 
But then again, if it's being sold, then somebody is buying it. Maybe if I had the sales numbers and other data, I could gain a better sense of how often this is actually happening and why. But alas, I don't have that info. That's all I have. I can't think of any other reasons why a teacher would do this. All I know is that I don't like it, and I don't think any of the possible reasons I've mentioned here do much to justify it. Students need their feedback. Even if they learn to provide it for themselves by becoming more independent, that independence won't be gained because of the system, but in spite of it. And that just won't do. This is just one point in a wide, complicated web of problems. I already mentioned, for example, how the separate but not unrelated problem of low teacher pay contributes to this. But you have no power over that, so what was the point of this? Well, I would hope that at the very least it helped in defining a problem. Even if you can't solve it at the level of the system, that understanding can, hopefully, get you thinking of ways to minimize the damage for yourself. And that's it for me. This has been Al the Tutor, reminding you once again that ignorance is not bliss. Take care, and I will see you next time.